Hi there, it's John Tolvanen and I would like to welcome you to the CE marketing training video. In this first lecture, we are going to take an a overall look at the construction product CE markings. We have decided to divide this first training into three parts. First, we are going to take a really good quick look at the CE markings in general and kind of like tie the CE markings of construction products to the CE markings of other products. So we are kind of, kind of like creating context here. In the second part, we are going to take a more detailed look at the CE marking of construction products and we are going to be talking about what the CE marking actually is and is not. And in the last part, we are going to see how the CE marking project always progresses and what kind of steps we have and what kind of actors we have there. So after this lecture, I really hope that you're going to have a really good idea of uh, an overall idea of what the construction product CE markings really are and what they require of you. But let's, without further ado, let's get started. And the first point I would like to just make here in the beginning is that CE markings are not a new thing. And in fact, CE markings have been around for 20 years or something like that. And they first were introduced as part of machinery after the machinery directive. And nowadays, or and now ever since, the CE markings have been included into more and more different kinds of products. And nowadays, if you go and browse through, through, browse through your office or home, you're going to find the CE markings are absolutely everywhere. Nowadays, all the toys must be CE marked, like this rubber duck. And if you have kids and you buy them puzzle, the puzzle is going to be CE marked. All medical devices are CE marked, all electric devices are CE marked, like laptops, computers, cell phones, screens, TVs, and so on. And nowadays, the con even the construction products start to be CE marked, like windows, doors, uh, asphalt, and so on. So CE markings basically everywhere. And so the, uh, the thing with the construction product CE marking is that you're not being singled out by the EU and you're not being picked, out, picked on by your government, but instead the CE marking is just being introduced to the construction products. So the construction products are brought into the whole CE marking schema that has been going on for more than 20 years now. The next thing I would just like to point out is that even though the CE marking is the same with every product, so we have always the CE symbol. This can be found in the toys and lifts, escalators, cell phones, computers, and so on. But the, how you can get there if you are a manufacturer of low voltage products or machinery or medical devices varies quite a lot. And the variation is due to the legislation that must be used to CE mark the product. So, for example, we have low voltage directive that gives out the instructions and dictates how you must CE mark a product with low voltage. And it's different from the machinery directive that dictates how you must CE mark a machinery and so on. So we have all these different laws and reg regulations. In total, we have 25, 25 different ones. And each of them tell a different story on how you can get there, even though the goal is the same. In this training, we are not going to be going too much in details on how to CE mark a low voltage direct, a low voltage product, or how to CE mark a machinery, or medical device, or a lift, or a toy, or a safety product, or any other product besides the construction product. So in this training, we are going to be concentrating on the construction products. But the thing I just wanted to point out in here in the beginning is that the CE marking is the same in each and every product group or with each and every law. But how you can get to the CE marking varies quite a lot. So if you are good at CE marking machinery, 
it doesn't translate that you know how to see a market construction product right away, even though it helps quite a lot. But for the rest of this training, we are just going to be concentrating on the construction products and how to see a market construction product. And I think it goes without saying that the construction product regulation can be blamed, so to say, for the mandatory CE markings. So without construction product regulation, you wouldn't even watching the, you wouldn't be watching this video and you wouldn't have to see any mark your products. But how the construction product regulation has been built is that the law itself, with all the regulation itself, doesn't have any instructions on how you must see a mark a certain product. So for example, if you are a manufacturer of a window, the construction product regulation doesn't have instructions for you on how you must see a mark the window in practice. So what we have with the construction products is that it has made these called harmonized standards mandatory for the CE marking. So even though the construction product regulation doesn't have any, in, any instructions on how you can CE mark your product, it's always referencing to the harmonized standards that have the detailed instructions on you, how you must CE mark the product. And here I would just like to point out that if, you, if your product doesn't have a harmonized standard, you don't have to CE mark the product. But the problem with these harmonized standards is that there are over 500, 500 of them at the moment. And each and every one of them concerns themselves with a different product or product group. Uh, so for example, we have the EN 1091 that deals with all structural steel products. So because we have a standard called EN 1090, sorry for my handwriting. So we have this harmonized standard called EN 1091 that deals with uh, structural steel products. So it makes all structural products so that you must CE mark them. And then we have, for example, 12899 that, ma that makes the traffic signs, that makes the CE marking for traffic signs mandatory. And we have standard 13242 that makes the CE marking mandatory for aggregates and so on. So we have 500 different kind of standards that make the CE marking mandatory for those product groups that the harmonized standards cover. But then naturally the next question is that how you can tell if your product has a harmonized standard or not. Because if it doesn't have, you don't have to see a market. And if it does, you must see a market. So the natural question is how you can determine if your product must be see a market or not. And the way to do it is basically presented here. I'm not sure if this is the best way, but this is how we how I would do it if I were you. And it consists of two parts. First, we have the European Commission site that has listed all harmonized standards. But the problem here is that this site only has the titles of the standards and also the, the, and the reference number to the standards, but nothing more. But what you are required to do is to determine if, the, if your product falls under under the scope of any of the standards. So here from the European Commission site, we can get the, we can identify possible standards where the title kind of like matches your product. But then what we must do is go to the Estonian standards, standard centers website, where we can see the preview of each of these standards. And then we can determine if the scope of the standards include your product. So let's take a look at how you can do it in practice. So here we have the European Commission's website. And here, here the European Commission has listed all the different harmonized standards that have been published. And this list is somewhere around 500 standards, standards at the moment. And if we think about, if we take an example and Let's talk about a manufacturer of 
doors, like gar garage doors. What we would have to do is go through all these titles and think about could they potentially include our product garage doors. So what we would do is go to the find property of this of our of your browser and just type in a search word. In this case, I would use door. And in this case, we would find seven matches or probable matches for standards where there is a door in the title. And what I would do next, and I would recommend you to do is go through all these different options and see if the title has anything to do with your product. And here we can see that this first standard EN1154 is mainly uh, mainly should deal with something like control door closing devices. So it's not actually the door itself, but the door closing device. And we are not manufacturing this, so this standard here wouldn't concern us. And then we would go to the next standard, and this one also deals with something else beside the door, and in this case, electrically powered hold open devices for swing doors. So this wouldn't concern us either. And then we would go over all these seven options. And in this case, we would find one standard that is EN132411 that deals with, with industrial, commercial and garage doors and gates. And in this case, we would be like, hey, this could actually concern us as this has all the keywords in the title. But by just looking at this title here, we cannot we can never be sure if this if this standard actually concerns us or if the scope of this standard includes our product or not. So what we must do then is take this standards reference and copy it and then go to the Estonia Center for Standardizations webpage called evs.ee and if it's if this web website is in Estonian you can change it from here in the upper right hand up, upper right hand corner to the English so it's much easier for you to use and then we have this search search bar here and here you would type the identification of the number that we identified here in the European Commission site and then we would just push go and see what, what it comes up with. And then the, this site would return the, all the possible standards that either have the keyword in the title, and these are what we are looking for, or it has this standard in its reference standards, like here. But what we are interested in is the harmonized standards itself. And in this case, it would be the EN132411. And don't be bothered with this initial EVS here. It's just the identification of this Estonian standard, Center for Standardization. And if you were looking at BSI's website, you would see that it includes the BSI EN132411. Or if you were at the Finnish website, you would have SFS EN and so on. So the first three or two letters here in front of the standard only means the local authority who's kind of like responsible for the standards in that country. So what you are looking for is the first EN and then the code that comes after it. And that's the only thing that matters, not uh, what was in, in front of it. And here, because this is the Estonian side, so what you must do then is to find this standard that has the right code. And here, take a look at the standard that has both English and Estonian languages. So in this case, we don't have only the East Estonian one, and we have we, and we only have the English and Estonian one. So then we would just go here to the view and buy section. And from here, we want to take the preview and the preview in English, and it's just going to open in a PDF. And then we get this preview of the standard. And what we are looking for here is the scope of this standard. And it's always, or let's say 99% of the cases, it's the section one scope. And then what we would have to do is go through this scope letter by letter 
and determine if our doors fall under this scope or not. And then it becomes quite obvious that if your door doesn't fall under this scope, you don't have to use this standard, this harmonized standard, to see e mark your product. But if your product actually falls under the scope of this standard, then it means <coughs> then it means that you must see e mark your products based on the instructions given out given out in this standard. So go to the European Commission's website and look for the standards that have your keyword in the title. Then go to the Estonian Standards Center and look for the same, same code and then take a preview and from the preview take a look at the scope. And if your product falls under the scope, you must see mark your product based on that standard, standard instructions. So this is one of the options how you can take a look and find out if your product has a harmonized standard or not.